Hello everyone, and welcome back to Here Be Dragons. It's me, Stev. You know me at this point. It, if by chance you don't, hi, I'm Stev, Steve, Steven, whatever. I don't don't care. Uh, that's John, my regular, regular co-host. How you doing, buddy? Hi, Dred. Uh, okay, Dred. The, before we started, there was... It was, it was my mic placement. It was me. It was me. Okay. I heard you say <laughs> it right as I click to go live and i'm like oh i'll adjust my mic and see what happened i, I was shocked because we actually have not had that problem for ages. Yeah, I, I had moved my mic out of the way for something so yeah um how you doing buddy oh uh, good it's it's been a tough week yeah i know it has um yeah. and i feel for you conversely it has been actually a really good week for me well, the, the scales balance. Like, like so. it balances out. I'm sorry you had a tough week, and I know why you did. We don't need to bring it well, up. Well, I, I, I just do want to mention one part of it, which is that I lost uh, my my little uh, child, <laughs> really, uh, my, my right. puppy, Sam. Uh, it's been a long time coming, but it still was brutally hard. So. How old was he? Uh, I think he was about 17 years old. Oh, so, yeah. I have a dog that's 18 years old, and it's coming soon. I can yeah, his, yeah. his dad made it to 19, and I think that's because there were two of them. And Sam, kind of when he was a puppy, he he's the type who, like, their Frodo would be laying around doing nothing, and Sam would come up to him and, like, paw at him to, get, right. <laughs> to move around. Crazy. Yeah, so I, I think that's... That's what kept Frodo around for a bit longer, and mm -hmm. you know it is what it is. But but yeah. damn, it's a lot of loss. Yeah, I, it's, you were a real one, Sam. You're going to be missed. Yeah, but uh, I will tell you what: the subject of today's stream has saved me these past couple days. Well, You're I'm glad. Happy. I was kind of worried because it is pretty heavily emotional. It is, but sometimes, like, it, it was funny because. Um, our topic last week was the Bad Batch, and I went to watch the new episode of uh, the Bad Batch. Actually, the night that I learned we were going to have to uh, take Sam in, and like I don't even remember the episode because like it was a happy, like fun go lucky episode, and and sometimes that's just not it doesn't work for you, and sometimes. The heavy stuff is what you need because mm -hmm. you need. Yeah, it lets you cry stuff. over something else. Yeah, exactly. Yep, and arcane will make you cry. Oh yeah. <laughs> um. Did do you want to say anything before I start, or you just want to hear my? You comments? know what? I will say I had a great week for two yeah. big reasons, and I'm going to briefly touch on both of them one i most of my friends know i've been having a pretty rough go of it recently i am out of work um been trying to find work and having trouble right well i decided i wasn't going to be able to make it to a convention in april that i bought a ticket for last year and i was like who wants to buy my ticket and you all you all <laughs> went behind my back and like bought me a plane ticket and got me a room to stay in. I'm rooming with John, I think. I haven't heard mm -hmm. the details. Oh yeah, no, you are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so like they took care of everything. I was trying to sell the ticket and they just paid for everything else I needed. And I'm like, okay, fine, I'll take it. But uh, the other good thing is that I launched a new business this week, which I will cover in more detail, a little bit more detail at the mid roll, but I got a job this week. That job is professional tabletop role-playing game master. Um, Do you know anything about that? Your D&D &D game <laughs> or any other tabletop game you want. Yes, you. Contact me however you want to contact me. Further details, I'll give you more, a little bit more at the uh, mid-roll. But yes, I'm a professional game master now. I mean, I hope you're a quick learner, Stephen. I've been doing it for 32 years. <laughs> I've been an intern for 32 years, so it's time to go pro. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, let's talk about Arcane, shall we? Because okay. I watched the show probably March last year, April maybe. 
And it blew my whole mind when I did. But at this point, I've been stewing with this show in my brain for almost a year. And John, when did you finish watching Arcane? Uh, about two hours ago. Okay. So and then I you... just rewatched the last 15 minutes uh, shortly before we uh, started this because I wanted to put my mind back into that uh, sort of emotional place. Um, let me just say, like, it would have been fun to do, like, one of my classic fake outs or, you, you know. Yeah, but you gave or, the game away already. Or, or play around, but, like, I could not wait to just exclaim about this. Like, I'm not going to mince words. This show is a masterpiece. Masterpiece, it is. Um, It's, it's like... I already can see that it's going to be a classic of, you know, at least the animation genre, but like the hell with the animation label. Yeah. This is just a great piece of work period. And like, it's so funny because I get, I tried to give the show a chance prior and this is the danger of like making quick snap judgments because the, impression i had of this show not just its quality but what kind of show it was based off of a previous viewing of like the first 15 20 minutes like does not prepare you for what this show is because i thought oh you know a bunch of like uh street rats and stuff like that like i i i've i've, I've seen this kind of thing before and but i sat down and watched the first episode and then I started the second episode and this world just blew open and, and it like by the end of the third episode, I was an absolute mess. Yeah. Because <laughs> it subverts your expectations so much in, especially probably in that moment, that is a very teaching moment for the audience where yeah. you learn this show is not going to necessarily do what you expect it to do. Yeah. Um, so, uh, as much as it, it pains me to say this, you were right, Stephen, because, because <laughs> holy crap, this like, is here's, John. Here's astounding. the thing. There are sometimes things where you're like, oh no, it's really good. And I'm like, I didn't care for it. And there are sometimes things where I'm like, no, it's really good. And you're like, I didn't care for it. But when something blows my socks off, it usually works for both of us and vice versa. You know, like we may disagree on what's good, but we don't ever disagree on what's great. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and there are like so many questions I want to ask you. And like, so I full disclosure, not only have I seen the whole show like three times, I've watched reactions to it. I've watched video essays about it. Like, I, I am steeped in the lore, at least of the show, not of the source material, League of Legends video game. But this show, like, I love it so hard. I mean, I have to imagine, like, I know nothing about the game, but it's just something it's about it. I, and I don't think I'm wrong about this because based on what I've read, uh, it seems like the reactions were effusive all around. But like, I... I have to imagine that this was equally as rewarding for people who love the game. Am I right about that? Do you know? I'm sorry. Say that again. I, I just, I, I feel like watching this, like it must've been e e as equally rewarding for people who love the game. No, 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 no. You're not. A, okay. So if you're watching the last of us, which you should watch, cause it's good. That is a direct adaptation of the last of us video game. Arcane is not a direct adaptation. Of yeah, well, I know that, but it must have pleased players of the game. Do you I, know? Mean, it, I mean, the reviews are very good. I will say there is no, there is zero narrative in League of Legends. When okay. you're playing the game, it is a, it's in a battle arena. It's literally just characters fighting characters. It's just play. like there were scenes where I, I could tell, like, um, the characters are pulling out like their weapons and this must mm -hmm. be the, like, their ultimate attacks. You see, yeah. both, you see 
like Jinx closes the whole series with her ultimate from the video game. And ju so just the fact that I guess it's laid such a phenomenal narrative groundwork, like, you know, leading up to those kinds of moments. That, that's why I feel like people who play the game must have also loved this just because mm -hmm. I, I feel like it really builds up to those moments. Well, it, it also well, took the characters that they run around on the screen for years and it gave them really compelling story. Like, and ultimately that's why I keep raving about this show, not because of just how good it is, but be how, but because of how much better it is than it had really any right to be. Like who would think first of all animated show like we all love animation here but like as a medium it's sometimes not as regarded as highly and i mean that's we don't need to go down that road we all feel more or less the same way about that but like yeah. that is what it is that is a hurdle this show has to overcome it and then it's a adaptation of a battle simulator basically how how do you make that interesting but yeah, I guess that did surprise me because because um, I actually went ahead and searched for like some uh, uh, gameplay videos of mm -hmm. the game. I was like, oh, so it's just like oh, an overhead mm -hmm. view, and it's just going through. And so there's you know, and so that's really all, all there is to, which is not to you know say anything about people. I'm sure it's a great. I'm I'm just not into video games these days much myself it's so, fine so know, like um that is such an absolute win for this like you could care like i don't play league of legends have never once played a league or a legend yeah you know, it's i play dungeons and or dragons you know um but like regardless of you know the the source material i mean i already said it i i think that this is like a superb piece of fiction, like regardless of, you know, so, and like, I, I'm just going to repeat myself often. It just blew me away so much. So, so the fact that there's no framework, like the fact that there is no sort of narrative in the the game that this was based off of is just all the more impressive to me yeah they they so they have characters different characters with different move sets and those characters have voice lines that give the, and movements that give them a little bit of personality and they have like a few uh like paragraphs about backstory that's the majority of what they have i will say when they introduced the character of jinx as a playable champion in the game in 2014 or whatever they made a music video okay and <clears throat> some people will tell you that riot games isn't a game company they're a music company that makes a game to promote their music because they have <laughs> like several bands that are like but they're they're characters in the game but like they're voiced by actual like k-pop stars and and heavy metal okay. singers and whatnot but yeah but they're in-game bands and they sell a lot of music we'll get to the music because i know you noticed um yeah i went on a journey with the, the yeah, music it, i i can imagine because every song is picked very specifically for what it's doing but actually it made sense now that background that you just gave me as to why you know stylistically they made the the music choice that they made you know mm -hmm. it, that that makes sense to me. and i will also say they did not get in they did not take an artist's music and put it in their show they made every single song except for the imagine dragons title track okay so like in episode one, when they're riding the elevator down and the song Welcome to the Playground is playing, and it's kind of got this like house R&B feel to it as you're entering the, you're seeing the Undercity for the first time, it sets a mood for that place. But that song, and that song is performed, I don't remember by who, but like a very capable professional singer, but the song is written in-house for that scene. 
Yeah, it. I will say it took me a little while with the music because I, I was. I thought the the score was great. Shocker. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it, but um, I always struggle with sort needle of, drops. Yeah, it's yeah. it's just not my style. Yeah, I know it's not pre- preferred music. But I will say, as the show went on, it became clear that it was all of the music picked for this was absolutely right for the world and the story. So, because even like playing, like when in, when you're in Piltover, the music is different, the score is different. Like you've got you've got uh, uh, they've got a scene where they have a guy performing the violin concerto at the opera and it's beautiful mm-hmm. by the way, composed in house and played by a world-class violinist, you know, or recorded by a world-class vi- violinist. Um, but yeah, then they get dirty, grungy hip hop in the dirt when it's dirty, grungy fight scene, you know, or like in the, Vi versus Savika rematch. They've got that sort of like Western standoff music that comes on the jukebox. So it's diegetic music even. And yeah, but yeah, it's, it's brilliant what they do with the music. I could, I, yeah. But I'm even not- like the, the main title, like I, I wasn't feeling it like at, at first, but, but this is the thing about main titles. Repetition does a lot. Yeah. And, and like, as the show went on, uh, like, yeah, like main title your head a little on, bit. I, I was like, yeah, this and is then you're on. like, right. At the, Get, look out for yourself <laughs> right there at the end. Yeah. I, I know. I know. I watched the show too. Um, oh. I will say like, so apparently egg sick plays as mech as echo in the game and Matt hydroxide who I play, I play, Goose Goose stuck with both of these guys a lot. Plays his Jinx, which what if like push that for later? Jinx Echo fight later. Let me ask you this: Do you have a favorite character from the show? Oh God! Because like, there's not a wrong answer, even if it's not one of like the main main ones. I mean. It's so tough because there's characters that like I I love even though like they're horrible people. <laughs> or you no, know, like no, no, you're allowed to have a favorite character that's a horrible person. If it's still I, there, I, like... I I know, but I, I like different characters for for different reasons. And maybe I mean, you I, don't I, have a favorite. I think when you get down to it, just because she goes on the most sort of extreme journey it like jinx is the i'm sure many people's choice but also like s- something a little less obvious i loved the character of silco mm-hmm. um just Silco's because talk extreme. about i bet silco's not as unpopular a choice as you think he is <laughs> but just talk about like inverting your expectations that character was so fascinating throughout the entire series and just like the the fact that you get through the show and you're like and i love that moment you know where he's sitting down at the the statue talking to vander uh, vander Mm -hmm. and so and you realize that uh vander was willing to like go for peace to protect those he loved and and silco will go to war to protect the, the one he loves yeah well, it's like just that but here's the thing they're they're opposite in that way but they're exactly the same because yeah yeah no i, I like up. yeah it's right. this, it's oh. not that though that, that those are opposite things it's how similar they are and right that's what's so beautiful about it and and like that goes all the way back. They lay it in, in in Act One. They 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 layer in that there's a lot of history with Silco and Vander. Like v- there's a lot worse things than enforcers. Vander says this, and he kind of clutches at his arm, which you will learn later is where Silco slashed him. He's got a big leather thing covering it, but he still is sort of reflexively grabs at it. Yeah. The, that's one of the layers, and then you see that he that obviously they were like brothers then they reached an impasse because because 
Vander decided it was time to stop fighting and Silco did not agree. And it came to the point where they were, you know, basically going to kill each other. And we get all that backstory. They were and, brothers. And they like were I just... brothers and you're not my brother anymore. And then he meets Powder and where is your sister? The first words out of her mouth is she is not my sister anymore with Silco's dead brother on the ground in front of him. That is a huge Silco imprinting on powder moment. Like he walked up to her holding a knife. Where's your sister? So I can kill you both. But her unexpected reaction and parallel to him struck a chord in Silco deeper than I think he expected it would, which is why he allowed himself to, okay, I'm going to hug you. Don't worry. We're going to show them. And that's an incredibly endearing and tender thing to get from a villain. Of course, he goes on to psychologically warp the poor girl. Yeah, I mean, he's not a good guy. No, he's not. <laughs> but but still, you know, fascinating. And you're emotionally connected to him, even as he, you know, does all these horrible things. Um, and th that's really what, you know, you get with the best villains is, you know, and and yeah, I was going to say, Micah mentioned how that carries over to to Vi and Jenks and, mm -hmm. and God, it's just like <laughs> well, this is we'll such a this is so brilliant. Um, so I, you I, you mentioned Jinx and Silco, and there's definitely sort of like a there's this there's moments between them where you're like, this is the most cutest wholesome things. There are moments where you're like, dude, that that's crossing the creepy line. Yeah, I, especially where, early on, I was like, they're not going there, are they? Please and they don't. They're not going, and they don't. Yeah, it's just that she is a ten year old girl in her head, despite being probably seventeen years old. Yeah, because she stopped growing when Powder died. Oh man, I need to. Mm, we're gonna save it for the back half, but. I'm just going to talk about the table scene at the end of episode nine for 45 minutes or something. You know? I, I probably held my breath for that entire scene. Well, not really, because I would have passed out, but, but, <laughs> but near enough. <laughs> I like this. I'm sorry. He's not a good guy. Understatements were made. <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong, Matthew. Well, I just wanted to make sure my position on that was clear. <laughs> um. But, like, I do want to say, like, I want to backtrack to sort of the, my initial, you know, impressions as they as they were changing. Mm -hmm. uh, like, and I watched the first episode and I, you know, got through with the episode and I, I enjoyed it. I, I don't know that I had yet crossed the line into going, oh, my God, this is great. Um, but then they do tease you with Silco at the end and I'm like... Ooh, what's this guy about? Mm -hmm. But it's when that second episode starts, and it's like you uh, start you on the other with, side of the door. Yeah, and and uh, it starts off with Jace as you know, a young boy, and then it goes into uh, Jace is his twenty four years old. His world. What? Jace is twenty four years old at that point. He's not a young boy. Oh, he's not. Well, he was younger. Uh, yes, yes, he was younger, but he's 24. Okay. Um, he gets locked uh, up in, in Hammer... But... Heimerdinger. I almost called him uh, Hammerdinger again. Because okay, here's the thing. As soon as Heimerdinger walked on screen, I was like, oh, so this is what the show is. Right. <laughs> and I was like, cool. Um, I call him Hammerdinger because it's funny. <laughs> and he's got BDE. But it's like, it's just this random, like, you know, everybody's fairly, you know, human looking. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> then this guy comes, you know, walking in and but yeah, like, it starts, I derailed you. I'm sorry. I derailed you. You were talking about the intro with, yeah, young Jace and you're going to reference the wizard scene, the teleportation scene at the beginning of the episode. Yes. Well, no, I, I was just 
introing the episode to get to Heimerdinger because that's the point where I was like, mm. this show is not what I thought it was. It's, you know, it's delightfully weird. It um, is. It is weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like they really did a good job of like, it's got enough familiarity that it doesn't feel like alien. You know, it's got the steampunk vibes, which we're a little used to. Um, and, you know, it's not like there's cephalopods walking around or anything. Everything's more or less, you know, humanoid. But, but yeah, it's definitely a weird, wild thing. And I kind of really love the blending of magic and technology, that they're both in a state where they're useful. But if we could get them to work together, that'd be really great. Just, yeah. Yeah, so, no, what I just loved about that is because episode one very smartly, I, I think, just focuses in on, um, you know, on the, the kids and the underground world mm -hmm. and, and establishing mm -hmm. that. And then we get to see, you know, the other side of the city, you know, um, with episode two and everything just opens up real wide and you get a sense of the scale of of the series and, and the world. And, and that was what I didn't count on back when I tried to watch this originally. I, I thought I had an idea of what, you know, uh, of what the show was and I was wrong. It's yeah. just, it, it'll keep fooling you too. Like not, not all the way up to the end, but I think by the time you get to the end of act one, the show, the, the, the show has shown its hand as to what it's going to do. On some level. But even then, like, I, I was like, okay, you know, even going into episode two and even episode three, you're like, okay, this is the world that we're settled into. And then, nope, you were watching a prologue. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then, you know, the real story is, let's, you know, jump forward a number of years. And yeah, I was, um, so my friend Kathleen is watching the show for the first time. I don't think she was able to finish before the stream. But I know she's watched Act One and Act Two, and yeah, she was like, "Oh my gosh, that was amazing!" And then she starts Episode Four. She's like, "No, this is the best episode yet." And she watches Episode Five. No, this is the best episode yet. And I'm like, "Yeah, well, enjoy the ride, buddy." Um, I will also say, trigger warning for you know, it's not really that big a deal, but I compare watching Arcane to being in an, in an abusive relationship. It's going to hurt you, but you're going to keep coming back. It's like a Game of Thrones, you know, it kept hurting us, but we couldn't stay away. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't even. Really, I, it was just so engaging that it's like I didn't. I didn't think about the fact that, yeah, we, we keep getting hurt, but it's the promise of or it, not the promise, but the hope of not being hurt. And mm -hmm. then they they'll dash that. <laughs> right but they, they do give you wins every once in a while just enough to keep you coming back but i yeah. can we circle back to silco for a minute yeah absolutely because like the man is like when he's introduced he feels like a mustache twirling villain and yeah. does very little to just divorce himself from that image and right up until the end of episode three and then everything after that, because he's allowed to have that other layer, it lets us keep looking further and further. Because we, because the layers we see aren't just him accepting Jinx. It's also he's having this conversation with Vander, who's all tied up, and saying, like, you know, we were like, you went soft. I wanted to keep fighting. I still want freedom for the Undercity, which is what he's fighting for i mean i'm not sure how you get there by making everybody a crack addict but that was like he was still motivated by the idea of wanting to make things better for people mostly himself yeah well that's the thing you start off with good intentions but then it becomes about you and your power mm -hmm. even as you're still convincing yourself that you're doing it for other people um, not too dissimilar from uh, a certain fellow from the expanse who I won't mention because I hate his guts, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, it, it's, it, but it like, was, 
I think about some key Silco scenes, like when he goes to Marcus's house and is building the house of cards with his daughter. Like, oh, ooh, terrifying, you know, terrifying. And the other one, okay, the other two are both meetings with the other, the chem barons, they're called. The one where he brings in, like, the tank of putrid air that kills the plants in the room. And, like, if you pay attention, the fan stops blowing. Yeah. And then, like, and just puts everybody in their place. Don't forget again. And walks out, like, hard G style. Hard key. <laughs> and then I still trust in loyalty with Savika's. Oh, God, like, that's. <laughs> but you can read it on his face that he wasn't sure. Yeah. He believed in loyalty, but he wasn't sure. And, and like, yeah, I mean, that's what makes that scene so great is just like you, and you can hear it in his voice. It's like he's. He's going to, like, bet on it in that moment, but he's not convinced. Mm -hmm. uh, and and there is, you know, you get the sense of relief <laughs> when uh, when things go the way All right. they do. So, uh, it's time for me to talk about my favorite character, and it feels like I'm throwing a counterpunch here, which should okay. tell you something about who my favorite character in this show is. Because she throws more counter punches than anybody. And that would be the illustrious Violet. Like, I love Vi. Like, okay. I'm not, I don't want to be hyperbolic, but like the only thing I can say is that it goes like Luke Skywalker Vi. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Like, I fell in love with this character. Not only is she, I mean, she's beautiful. She's capable. She's not indestructible. She gets the crap kicked out of her. She loses, but she is a powerful fighter. She's not afraid to get in there and mix it up. She's got a moral compass. She is punch lady. I'm no denying that. But the best scenes in the show are Vi being emotional with... Jinx slash powder with Vander with Caitlin. That's the heart of the show. And uh, oh, well, uh, and uh, I, I agree with everything you're saying. I think it's easy to like underestimate, you know, Vi in terms of like the strength of her character just because she is sort of the protagonist. You know, everybody around her gets to sort of be wild you know, and flashy and, you know, and which is funny to say for someone with like wild pink hair, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but, um, but and no, I, I agree with everything you're saying. She's fantastic. Yeah. Like boxers have broken down her fights and been like, actually, she's really good. Like she's got this thing where she likes to do the, the Superman punch, which is not a great move. You know, and, and, and it's a little bit over the top for, but it for looks TV. great. But like, <laughs> like they're like, no, good. She's got good head movement. She's got, you know, good arm, like hand placement. It's good stuff, man. Uh, I love by because she is the emotional core of the story. And it's such an emotional story. She is the one like. One of the things I watched a video essay where somebody suggested that one of the things they that that. Um, Arcane does really well is that you can take any character and you can give them a few sort of, uh, there's a couple of different binaries, young and old, Piltover and uh, the Undercity, Zaun. Um, are you a science person or not? Uh, and every character can be defined by like three or four of these tags. And there's no two major characters in the story as many, because it really is an ensemble that that have the exact same trait set so you can see how they will interact differently based on that for instance jace science guy top side he's young heimerdinger plenty of scenes with jace pretty similar but he's old not young and that is like the crux of their disagreement mm -hmm. and then jason and 
and uh, Victor, pretty similar, both young, both scientists, but one's from Piltover, one's from Zahn. And that's the crux of the thing they disagree on as well. And the thing is, you can also understand both points of view from every character. Yeah, and, and I just made a sidebar here real quick. It's funny how, and maybe it's because of who he was voiced by, but I didn't initially, for some reason, I didn't trust Victor. Like, I thought he was sort of up to no good. And then he turns out to be, like, one of the most tragic mm -hmm. characters in, in the show. And so great. And, um, and uh, what's... Uh, the the actor Harry Lloyd, who of course mm -hmm. most of us know is uh the the Sarah's from Game of Thrones, but mm -hmm. uh but he's just he's so good in the part and like just tragic, <laughs> you know, his whole and you even his whole like arc. How Victor stops Jace from jumping in like episode two and then Jay stops Victor from jumping in episode nine. Oh, I love a good parallel. And it's the exact same <laughs> place, seven-ish years apart or whatever. It's so good. Like, and every time they come back to a location, there's different people interacting there. Like, how many scenes are on that bridge? A lot. And it's always, like, you can almost always, not every time, but it's pairs of characters. Jace and Victor have a scene there. Jace and Silco have a scene there. there. There's the fight between between Echo and Jinx is there. The opening scene of the show is there. So you keep coming back to these familiar places and you see how like things change, things stay the same. It's oh God, I can't say enough about the show. Every time I want to say something, seven other ideas come invading. Like, what is this show about, John? <laughs> right? How do you boil it down? Right? It's so like... it's about, so the way I always put it is it's about, it's about two sisters who are trying to figure out if they can heal the bond between them after both suffering some severe trauma set against the backdrop of class warfare. That's about as good as I can that, get. That, that, I think that's the best. But like, best what is it about? Get. It's about a lot of things. And, okay, you mentioned, okay, I love Vi. I don't need to go down the rabbit hole too much. I think it's pretty cl clear to understand. Well, that. I, I will say others mentioned about her and Caitlin. And, and can I just say that I'm going to punch anybody who re refers to this merely as shipping? Uh, that's a love story. It better and, be. And it better be. Yeah. If, if this is if no it's, mere ship, this if is it's, an armada, my friends. Yeah. If, if they don't follow through with that, I will just be furious. Well, it's, it's very clear. Like there was a lot too much going on for them to stop and, and be like, I love you. You know, like that it would have felt out of place. Yeah. But the fact that they became very gentle with each other, that the way Vi opened up to Caitlin talking about her childhood, like it's one of the most gentle scenes in the whole show. And it's just, and it's, it's a lesbian couple lying in bed together and it's not sexualized at all, not mm -hmm. at all, which is fantastic. Like, yeah. They are not trying to please the male gaze. They're just showing the two women lying in bed. They're both fully clothed and they're not cuddly up on each other. They're, there's a little bit of distance between them and they sort of are making a yin yang with their body. It's all very symbolic, you see. Yeah. But like, I, 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 like every frame of the show feels like that. Like it's chosen specifically to be there. The fact that they are going to give us a lesbian romance that is, you know, I, I, I'm not going to say it's completely n not sexualized at all. She does like do the lean in your hot cupcake. And and if you're really good and you slow down and you watch it one twenty well, one quarter speed just to like see, which I didn't do, but I watched a video from somebody who did. Um, 
uh, Caitlin, when she's walk or, or when Vi is walking around Caitlin, she like her eyes do the up and down, like she's checking out the what she, what Caitlin's packing in the back door, you know, in the in the backyard there. And, and they animated that, you know, like it's mm. meant to be there because she's checking her out. And yeah, it's. I, I hope season two gives us a genuine romance between the two of them. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I hope I get to see more of Caitlin. Caitlin was a great character that I didn't get enough of in this show. I mean, it's a huge cast. It is. So, like... And, and, and in that way, you made the like the, the Game of Thrones <laughs> comparison earlier in terms of like, uh, you know, like them ripping our hearts out and all, all that and stuff. But it's also juggling a huge number of characters is and it, another thing in in common. And but it never felt like strangely, it never felt that way. Everything because there. are all more and more or less like it's the same story. Mm -hmm. Like they're all part they're of all the right same here. plot. So, uh, so that's why like one scene blends into another and, and it all feels organic. Hold on. Hey, there's a lot of people that come in and out of the chat, but AK is here and AK. I'm Hi, AK. Hi buddy. And I'm glad you're, you're doing better all the time. I think. Last I heard, you were doing better, and I'm glad. I hope it's trend is continuing. Yeah, and uh, and definitely watch this show. And Thank definitely you. watch Arcade <laughs> if you haven't seen it. Um, what, what, mm, were we still talking about Vi and Caitlin, or had we moved on? Um, I, I'll, I'll just say, like you know, you were talking about the the way. The, you know the the bedroom scene was constructed mm -hmm. and i'll just say that like my heart was fluttering just watching it like yeah, that it's, it, it's so romantic and it's you not know, very, and, it's not sexy but it's very romantic yeah it's so gentle and vulnerable and again that's why vi is my favorite character because she's gonna get in and she gonna throw hands y'all and what and if she's coming for you like good luck because the lady is terrifying but again, her best scenes come when she is vulnerable, comforting. Again, it, and it happens. You see it with Vander and Jinx slash Powder and with Caitlyn. And even with uh, Echo when they, when they finally, you know, come together. All right. I, I did love that moment, like, uh, you know. And how long have you been out of those? <laughs> you know, when she just gets out of the restraints when it's uh, her and Echo. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was and, great. But, but her move, like, she threw hand, but she didn't know it was him. But when she realizes it's him, she's like, like her whole demeanor changes. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, okay, so... We another really thing, well, another thing I, I just wanted to say about her, and this goes back to what I was saying earlier about the, you know, the fight scenes, which to me, I could tell they were like, okay, this must be like their fighter mode from the, you know, from the, the game. Even though I'm not into video games now, I was very much a video game player when I was a, a kid. And so those sequences, especially when she, you know, puts on the the, the uh, big the Atlas gauntlet, yeah, you know, like that tapped into that childhood joy of game playing, where you're like, all right, your character has their, you know, weapons and they're, you know, <laughs> and they're really going at it at full strength with, you know, and so so even not being a fan of you know modern day video games and and not playing this game in particular. Uh, like you got me excited to watch those sequences. Right. Um Micah asked, did did you guess that it was Echo before the reveal? No, I didn't I did but, not either. But I, I was expecting him to come back at some point, but I, I, I wasn't I expecting flat, that reveal. I, I flat forgot about the poor kid until he came back and they're like, Oh yeah, that kid. <laughs> oh my gosh. And he's awesome. 
So my apologies, little man. I can't believe I forgot you. But you know what? It let me just have this moment of like realizing what a badass you had you were. That fight scene was, which, and and not just it wasn't just which, that the fight scene which, was which great. one the the bridge the bridge okay you know what yeah let's just do it let's just go there now the like bridge. it was i will say it wasn't just the fact that he got a really cool fight but that he gets you know a, the hero moment and i think the episode is even titled after uh it's the boy uh, him yeah and and the fact that also it wasn't a didn't end up being a sacrifice. I was happy about that. Like it would have been well earned, but also you, you know stepping outside of just the narrative of the show. You have a black character who you know. It, it, I like the fact that okay, he's not exiting the story. He's staying in the story. Which and, you know. and what a badass! Yeah, what a badass! Because we see him really from episode four. As the firelight onward, he just got the mask on. and But yeah, that makes for a great reveal. Uh, okay, let's just talk about that whole episode, which starts with a rap video slash recruitment video for the firelights. Well, they and war. that's yeah. another awesome. thing. They always they always surprised me by how they started each, epi in each episode. Because sometimes it's a flashback. Sometimes, you know, in, in that case, it's like... Oh, mm, what is this? <laughs> you know, it's yeah, no. And the, so the way that opening ties back in with how they start the fight, um, while also calling back to when the two of them were, were mm -hmm. kids and, and like, and that's really, just, a, it feels so like a music video, the way it unravels too. Yeah. And, and like, I, I'm not going to lie when that thing, you know, you kind of got the intro part when he's you've got the t -t 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 kind of the metronome sound and you got the person coming in ooh, ooh, or whatever. But then that beat drops and I'm like, y'all don't. Th that's Steven right there. When that when that <laughs> beat dropped, I'm like, I'm gone, y'all. That that song goes hard, and I it's good. And I feel like there's there's if nobody has done it yet. Somebody should do it. Like there's got to be a mixture of that scene and uh, and the car from Wayne's World where they're all. Oh going yeah, <laughs> it, appropriate. It would work because <laughs> and the thing is, like the way they cut back and forth between different ages and uh, just the uh, oh man. I can't say enough, like people are going to write dissertations about this scene when they're going for their masters in visual art or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, this is one of those shows that is a gold mine for an analysis, be it the art, the music, the animation, the character development. Oh, my God. I haven't even like talked about my reaction to the animation itself yeah, um, we, well because and the thing is like are we so interrupting much... the bridge fight to do that no 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 you know you what, what I let's, mean? let's continue on and then we'll yeah yeah we'll we'll come like, back to the animation. make a note make a note must talk about animation <laughs> okay but yes the bridge scene is also like as as hype as the song is every fight in this show has the same ending always the same ending and that is violence begets more violence yeah there is all and, and like i'm a badass i'm a badass i'm a badass i'm gonna blow myself up now because i'm losing or jace is gonna kill a kid accidentally or some you know like there are consequences when you choose violence and it almost never results in less violence afterwards and yeah, that was that was the thing. Theme. That was the thing. You get this awesome fight scene with with Jace and Vi pulling out, you know, their you know, their weapons and and doing like the big, you know, oh then these are the characters with their game weapons, you know, doing mm -hmm. the, and they're, the they're thing. and off. it's and it's cr crowd pleasing and all this, but then it ends with a kid getting killed. Mm -hmm. And 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 so that brings it all back. And down. the bridge scene ends in in the same way. You know, 
we, we we're all like, yeah, this this rap music video is awesome. And then rewind time, and it's fast and brutal, and it's two teenagers beating the crap out of each other, trying to kill each other. And that's yeah. that. If that doesn't freeze your blood, it should. And then he stops and hesitates, and her response is, "I'm just going to let this grenade go." six inches away from me and that's where <laughs> that's where i stopped last night leaving the last two episodes for today i was yeah. like oh my god i can't believe i have to stop there but but i'm gonna have to ready stop there. <laughs> to ready to end it all yeah for herself and i think it's that's a testament to how broken she is in that moment she feels betrayed like she can't trust Silco anymore. He lied to her. She can't trust Vi. She can't trust anybody. And now she's been beaten. She can't lose, so her only option is to end it all. And it's such a heartbreaking thing that she is in that place. But yeah, so we get this, like, everybody's high. What a, oh, this is awesome. Oh, wait a minute. I actually don't want these people to hurt each other. God. It's, it's, it's so, so heartbreaking. Every be, and Vander tells Vi this in what episode two, where he tells her like, "If I hadn't led us across this bridge in the past, your parents would be alive." Who are you willing to lose? Violence begets violence. In war, nobody wins. Like it's telling you up front the message it wants you to take away from this whole story. Uh, the fact that the violence is created because of the divide between top and bottom in Piltover and Zahn. And it's encapsulated through the story of these two sisters. I really think the heart of the story is the violence begets violence. And, and you know, it's, it's media. We're allowed to have fun and have a good time watching the Death Star blow up, you know? Like, it's, it's okay. But good media should say something more than just bright flashy lights and arcane is definitely doing that it's going to make you cheer and hoot and holler because your heroes are doing amazing things but then you're going to find out that there are consequences for it and there are always consequences yeah and um just another side note where i'm gonna seemingly go you know off into another direction uh but since you were mentioning Vander, what I love about the fact that we get the, those first three episodes and it paints a world for us, you know, that is not going to quite be the world that we follow for for, for the other episodes because, you know, things change massively. Um, it's really kind of, rem and, and this is, again, a, a you know, left field reference, but it really kind of reminded me of the early minutes of the film Gangs of New York, where we get to see uh, Daniel Day-Lewis and Liam Neeson's characters, you know, leading opposing armies against each other. And you're almost like, I, did, I wish I could get a glimpse of that time a, a bit more before it flashes ahead to later, where, ironically, Liam Neeson's son trying to... Uh, to kill his father's murder, you know, sort of becomes a surrogate son, you know? And so there's a, not quite the same, but similar, right. you know, the thing going on here. And, and so the fact that we got three episodes to sort of sit in establishing, you know, the, the past that yeah, a status sort of, quo from which we yeah. can create. And it, it's just, I, I love that. I just, the, the way this show was, the way the whole narrative was structured and it, it's, oh God, it's just, so, it's so uh, damn good. Also, like, just because we're going off in all kinds of directions with a, without a plan, um, I'm just going to say a few character names so that we can, when we get to the end, I can at least say I mentioned them. And that is Milo, Clagger, Mel Medarda, we'll probably talk more about Mel at some point because she's too important. Um, Sky, poor, poor one out for Sky. She was a real one, gone too soon. Um, 
who else should who else deserves Deckard? Interesting side character, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and not only Mel Madarda, but Mel's mom. Uh, like, what's her name? She Hulk Madarda. Oh yeah, well, well, and she just comes in in like the third act, and it's like, oh great, so things are going to get more complicated now. <laughs> Um, because we, we know we're introducing a, a, a new character who's you know willing to you know just bring about war just for her own you know purposes. Yep, um, not great, Bob. Yeah, <laughs> but like, but all these characters, I, I was having a conversation with someone recently where I said there are no throwaway characters in this show, yeah, none. Uh, oh wait, I, I I did just since we're mentioning you know it's all, the, all the other characters, I just want to say my only complaint about this show was that there were not a buttload of f bombs dropped by Show Ray. Okay, <laughs> right. You, know, you, you, come, you come with Carolla? you come with expectations, right? I mean. <laughs> But that's okay. She didn't have enough time, you know. No. <laughs> Maybe if uh, the character had stuck around for longer, we would so, have gotten some of that. Did you recognize the voice of uh, Vi? Oh yeah, okay. Haley Steinfeld. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I know I knew, you're a big fan of her. I knew that going back. Yeah, I've I've loved her since True Grit, right. where like takes a lot to stand, you know, your acting ground with Jeff Bridges and, yeah. and she was fantastic. Oh yeah. I, I'm like, she voices Vi and she also voices uh, Gwen Stacy in the into the spider verse movie. So I'm like, if I ever make an animated thing, I'm getting her <laughs> to voice in it because God dang, she good. Which is not really not the only, you know, sort of, uh, connective tissue I, I would draw between this and into the spider verse oh um, yeah it, it just the animation it, but you know what we're getting close to the mid roll so we're gonna get I... into the animation i just wanted to make sure everybody that we might accidentally not mention my name gets mentioned savika gotta mention savika i said i don't know if i said finn earlier or not but that was the the uh, asian guy with the gold jaw fantastic mm -hmm. character design amazing character design so yeah. Also, everybody, pour one out for Clagger, the unsung real G hero of the show. Like, he did not have a chance to sign, but he he did everything he was asked to do. He was a real one. Milo, I guess you too, but really, Clagger, <laughs> you're gone too soon. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do the mid roll. All right. Okay. I'm going to start this time with patrons. Why? Because they deserve it. We love you guys. Thank you, patrons. Our patrons are dragon people, like literal dragons. Nobody can prove otherwise. Hold on. I got to get an F in the chat for Clagger. Thank you, Micah. Um, but, and the greatest among them are the great worms. The great worms, ridiculous Ed Tollett and Lord John Bronstein, the wise. Thank you, great worm dragons. You honor us. Um, yeah, so uh, they are supported by a whole host of elder dragons, including the cloaked one of the underworld, Ryan Stavka, the Russian quartermaster, Reflective Rambling, Archmaester Emma, Kate, mistress of the House of Books, Jared Kozel, doctor of dragons, Lady Moralee of Starfall, and Lady Rita, the Unbound. Thank you, patrons. You guys are rad or cool or awesome or <laughs> what, what do the kids say now? Yeet? Are they yeet, John? I'm not sure. You're asking me. Yeah. <laughs> you are the yeetist. Thank you. Okay. So what's coming up next week, John? So we, uh, we did have a conversation with Nessie a little bit. Yeah, I, I don't know. I admittedly there's been a lot going on the past couple of days, sure. so I haven't been able to, you know, think about what we might do. So but Nancy wants to talk about Dune, which has not been done on this channel. Oh, did she finally watch it? I guess so. 
Because <laughs> I, I, I recall I, I back in January of I last would, year. Because yeah, it was just you and Chloe when you did it on John Webster Films. Yeah, but uh, it was really funny because back at HereBeatCon last January, while you all were upstairs uh, probably playing uh, um, maybe D&D or something. I no, because we were all in the room for for that you guys had oh no you delayed probably one of the card games or whatever nessie and i were downstairs and we started to watch dune and she fell asleep on me so uh, <laughs> well if it was during here because like that took a lot out of all of us yeah you took a nap when you when it came you just took the nap so now i would love to do that that would be great okay so next week dune part one Cool. I get to rewatch it again. I haven't watched it since I saw it in the theater, so it'd be a good chance to revisit it. It's been over a yep. year. And yeah, I've been thinking about it a lot because because uh, I'm starting my reading again, and I never quite got through the book. Not for lack of interest. The book is great. It's just it's been quite a year, so so you know, re reading kind of got pushed to the side. But uh, yeah, no, that sounds like a lot of fun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, Kathleen is popping in to say, "You're welcome, friend. I'm glad I could be here to, <laughs> to like, continue to be annoying until you finally <laughs> broke. It's what I do. Ooh, I like that. You've got the. That's cool. Oh, and neat. Friends, come back next week. We'll see you next week." Um, yeah, no, and now you've, uh, now you've enlisted me to the cause of not shutting up about this show because yeah, like you're going to everybody you can now, right? Yeah. Like, Look, I know it sounds like hyperbole, but it's really not. It's one of the best animated things ever made. Um, yeah. okay. So we did patron. Oh yeah. Who wants to join the Slack group? If you want to join the Slack group, just send me an email. To we three dragons at gmail.com and I will get you in. And that is the place where basically if you're in the chat right now, it's an extension of that that never ends and has specific lines of chat, be they general, Star Wars, uh, what's popping off right now recently. Lots of gaming stuff. Uh, we did a what did we do? Watch party for Labyrinth Friday. There was a watch party recently for another film. We organize our RPGs through there. Yeah, come join us at we 3 dragons at gmail.com. We'd love to have you. Don't be an asshole. I will kick you out. I'm not kidding. I will. Um, wait a minute. What? What a thing to just look over into the chat and read. <laughs> I, I love you, Easy. I just didn't have context when I read that, and it made me stop dead in my tracks, which is kind of funny, if you ask me. Um, yeah, so I said at the beginning, I'm going to bring it up again now. I have a new job, y'all. I am a professional tabletop gaming game master, meaning you want to try d and I got you. You want to try, you played D&D &D before, but want to try a different system? I got you there. You can't find somebody to play with? I can get you in somewhere. Uh, but I am now doing this professionally. I do not have the links in the description for the video for this week's video. But starting next week, I'm going to have a link to my, yeah, to my page on a, on a website where I will do all that stuff through. Because, yes, it's, um, but yeah, I'll run whatever game you want. My rates are reasonable. All you got to do is ask me. And you guys, if you're in the chat, you know how to find me mostly. And if not, send me an email to we3dragons at gmail.com. And I will happily discuss that with you as well. Or DM me on Twitter or whatever. And like, if you want something, if you want to try something and you've got a family with kids and you want to bring the kids along, let me know. I'll make something for you guys. It's, this is my job now. So, so yeah, I've got a couple of games that I'm already going to make money off of, but more is good because I don't make enough yet. But this is a new job, folks. I really would appreciate you guys uh, 
contacting me if you're interested. It is a, you know, entertainment service. But uh, yeah, if you want, let me know. And starting next week, I'm going to have all of that stuff down in the description so you can contact me through the website that I will be using. I just didn't have it ready this week. Oh, what else, John? What else goes in the mid-roll? Ice and Fire Con is coming up yep. soon. I think if you want to get a ticket to Ice and Fire Con, you still can. Um, I'm not sure how many they got left, but they've got some. And I'll be there. John will be there. Um, Nessie will be there. There's a few people in the chat I know are going to be there as well. Uh, Kathleen is going to be there. It's going to be a, uh, a much needed vacation. Yeah, much needed. A lot of the other regulars are going to be there. A lot of people haven't seen this show yet, so they're not here. But like Laura, Kate... Aaron M and you know there are like a lot of us. And thank you, Curtis. I appreciate it. I'm it's self-employed, but like I'm moving in the right direction. I actually, you know, I need to I need to have about 10 games on my schedule, and I currently have two with a third one likely. But like that's a start. That's a start. Uh yeah, anything else goes in the middle? Mid roll? Uh, no, I'm, I think we got our cover. Great, cool. So, yeah, next week, Dune. Now, tell me about animation. Well, first, let me say that I jumped the gun on, uh, like, like with a lot of things about this show, uh, about like judging what the animation was. Because at first glance, it's like, oh, this is based off of a video game. Uh, and it's sort of, you know, and my first impression was, oh, it's CG animated to kind of look like a, a bit like a video game. But once I actually was really sitting down and watching, paying attention, like, there is so much complexity to this animation that it is beyond stunning. Because uh, it's not just CG animation. Uh, there's beautiful like you know traditional 2d animation you know in there it's a definitely a marriage of the two things and and just watching the the way they did it, it's just it looked so stunning john, john did yeah. you really enjoy like all the behind the scenes stuff on your extended edition lord of the rings dvds oh yeah well then you maybe should watch a thing called bridging the rift the making of arcane Okay. Yeah, it's like, I, it's like five forty-five minute episodes or thirty-minute episodes of, of like really start to finish. Nice, because yeah. I wasn't sure if there was anything that really, you know, talked about the behind-the-scenes process of. Oh yeah, you know, I, I, of quite a bit. Nice. Um, yeah. So if, if, if any of y'all are interested in that, it's, I think it's called bridging the rift. But especially, like, in, even in the first episode, like, you know, when, you know, the, you know, the kids are, like, you know, are breaking and then the, the explosion goes off and you see these explosions and, and like, the smoke and stuff. And it, it very much looks like classic, like, you know, uh, hand-drawn animation and, you know, all of that. But it, then you've got... The, the characters which have elements of yeah, of that as well but also using three models and it, it's just you know what they've done with it is so beautiful and um and apparently i read that it took like six years for them to, to that's to, because to, they had a lot of ups and downs again watch this watch yeah. the behind the scenes stuff because they, they but i'm just saying them. like worth every second they put into it because it is just utterly astounding and um and that again is like what i get for like jumping to to judgments about you know about a show like this because i i was just and and so that's similar to um some of the stuff they were doing with into the spider-verse as well with 
using 3D and 2D uh, animation. And, and in that case, it was used to kind of, you know, make it look like, you know, pages off the comic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What really impresses me is that it is like, it's 3D, then it's like, it's a fully rendered 3D. No, it's not fully rendered. It's, it's because there's no, the, none of the lighting is 3D, is done in 3D. And then they, because they, they texture everything and then they go back and an artist hand textures every frame. So all the edge lighting is hand drawn, not done by not done it with a digital lighting software. Like an artist goes in and decides light goes here, not here. In every frame, there's a scene where Savika is walking down the street and she goes from sort of like having her face lit by a green light into having her face lit by a red light. And some artists had to sit there and do that transition. And it, it's and it's got that oil painted look to it as well. Yeah. God, it, it, which makes the hairs even look real. I mean, it's definitely stylized, but man, I cannot. I, I'm going to go on forever about this. The animation is stupidly good. Stupid. Well, and and that just brings joy to me because it shows that like because for a while it was like oh. Hand drawn animation is the past, you know, and CG is the the future. And it's like, well, they're both tools, um, and and this is the kind of thing I love to see of of using, you know, bringing those things together to to create something truly both beautiful and incredibly immersive. The other thing I wanted to say was like. The cinematography was just breathtaking. And that's separate from just like how great the animation looks. Mm -hmm. It's like... It's where is the camera? Yeah. And it was so like... And you don't always necessarily want to do this because animation allows you to go further. Um, And I think they did do that. but, But something that was really great about the show is it felt grounded in reality. Like there were certain things that would be difficult for a, you know, like a, a real life camera to do. And they took advantage of, of that, but like the way the camera would hang on a close up or, or move with you know, a, a character and like they'd be running through the streets and the way it kind of traveled with the character, something about it just felt like it's like I'm watching like it's taking advantage of all the the beautiful stuff that animation can do but at the same time it feels real like like they did film this with a real camera mm-hmm. like there's just was and something like, so immersive about it that it even feels like there's 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 camera shake when there should be yeah and which is and i don't thing to do I, in animation yeah, yeah i don't know like maybe i've seen it before but it, not very yeah. often yeah and it, it was done in into the spider verse but like yeah, but, it's a top tier animation technique. But even with that, like because into the Spider Verse, you know, is Spider Man flying through the air, like there is a certain fantastical element, and not that there isn't in this, but something about this just felt so real world uh, about the camera work, and and so yeah, it was something that I noticed pretty quickly and i was like oh i love this um it it just just really the way they were able to nail those emotional moments with you know with the cinematography and 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 so that you and that's the thing it took like everything's animated but it's all taken so seriously the emotions and 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 they're conscious of, you know, how they're using the cinematography to convey those emotions. And it, it just yeah. brilliant. Like even down to like, I think there's a shot where it felt like they had a fisheye lens that did a push in. And I'm like, you animated that? Yeah. And then um, as, as Mathieu was pointing out a moment ago, all the smoke, all the fire, all the 
magical hex tech effects are two mm-hmm. D animation drawn over the top, and then yep. composited to the three D underneath it. And like, it it's beautiful, and it's down to like it's animated on twos when the CG is not. So it has this almost more kinetic feel to it, but it's those things that have that type of, you know. It's the smoke, it's the fire, it's the stuff that's got a lot of movement to it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, and now I can't wait to watch yeah. the, the documentary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it is like a five part, and I, I posted even the link to part one in okay. the chat. Okay, they're they're like the first the first one is twenty six minutes, the last one is thirty six minutes, but yes, they're definitely very much worthwhile. Excellent. And John, yeah. I know you love all the behind the scenes stuff, so I'll be like, yeah, you need to make sure we bring it up. Um, but I know I like I'm just repeating myself now, but like I really need to communicate that like I wasn't. I was about halfway through the show where I said, I wasn't just saying the show is masterful. Like, and you have to be careful about when you say this, but like I said to myself, this is a classic because it's tempting to say that about new stuff. And yeah, I can be accused of that's exactly what I'm doing now, but you just feel something when you know that something is going to be regarded um mm-hmm. you know th- that way in in years to come uh just on the pure level of it being such an achievement for animation uh you know it's going to be a standard you know yeah, for, it's a, for, it's for like, years to come and it's hard to sell this show without sounding like you're just a sellout yeah <laughs> um but then the even life. beyond like animation it's just one of like the best pieces of like what whether you want to call it you know sci-fi fantasy you know fiction that i've seen in a really long time it's just um it's yeah there's no way to not make it sound like hyperbole right um, it, like it's hard it's, it's hard it's to talk about great. it and, and, and feel like oh i'm just like blah, 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 you know what's the biggest word i can think of but no it really is like like Into the Spider Verse was a game changer for animation. This feels like it's a similar type of, like it's one of those things where people are going to look back in twenty years and be like, it, "It was amazing. Look at how good it is." Like, and and just because like, and you could toss out you know the achievement that it is on the level of animation and just look at the you know the world building of of the series. You know it's it's not that easy to create you know something so multi-layered and fascinating and that feels like it has a history to it and um and like and the way they they developed that for this and without even like as we were saying earlier it's not like a lot of that came from you know, something that was already laid out and like the, the game or anything. This was, you know, story that they are creating to give, you know, background to all that. And it, it's, it's just, I, I was just sitting there in awe of, you know, of the story itself. Um, and to say nothing of the presentation and, and then you have the characters, which are, they're phenomenal characters. They're, you know, multi-layered and and like I I love seeing you know I'm going back to Silco again, but I love seeing a villain like Silco, you know, who yeah at first glance he does you know look to be okay. This is our our baddie. I I know what this guy's about. Then oh no, I don't because I'm actually gonna sympathize with this guy and at least on some level. Yeah and. And even weep for him, you know, in that final scene. And, you know, not because he doesn't deserve, <laughs> you know, what's coming to him, but because, like, 
we know what's driving him and and so and that elicits our sympathy even if you know we obviously you know don't condone any of his actions you know there's a little bit of talk in the chat about the season two stuff people are like it took them six years to make season one and well, the reason well, it took six years is because they made a first draft that got rejected and then okay. and then during the production process lockdown started so like they had hurdles they had to overcome along the way. And also I imagine like, uh, you know, things always, you know, things are able to run more smoothly once you've already like set everything up. Yeah. So season two, the best I can find is Q4 2023. Okay. So. I mean, it even like, that's the thing. Like, and again, off topic, but uh, and I'll I'll hold back on too much of my rant on this because, like I said, it's off topic. But it's like the whole thing with uh, uh, Netflix and and Age of Resistance, where they're like, well, it's you know, it's you know, you can see why they cancel it because it you know took all this money and this effort. And it's like, but you've already built all the stuff. Mm -hmm. You've built all the sets. You've built all the puppets. It's like it's going to be easier and cheaper the second time through. Um, and and so that's and so taking that to this, it's like they've been through this. Yeah. Once. I, the, one of the things that Arcane has is a leg up in that department is the fact that they don't need Netflix is just distributing it. They're not footing the bill. Well, that explains why there's a season two. Right. Because <laughs> right means it's funding the production. Nice. So that's good. Like net Netflix is just a distributor. That's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And as, as popular as the show is, Riot Games is like, yeah, we're making a season two. Duh. Um, and okay. it's great. Like, it's, and at the end of the day, it's phenomenal, uh, like, promotion for the games themselves. Because, yep. like. I'm sure there are a lot of people who, within the last year or so, have tried out League of Legends. Yeah. Or checked out the KDA Pop Stars music video and then bought it on iTunes. You know, <laughs> yeah. Not gonna lie, that song is kind of catchy. I mean, it's very poppy, but it's pretty catchy. You know, and it's got a cool music video. Um. So uh, there's, I will leave you to discuss whatever you want once I get through this thing. Okay. And that is the table scene at the end of episode nine. Okay. Oh, chills. Because this is the scene where Powder dies, and this is the scene where Powder truly dies. Jinx is actually born at the end of episode three, and the two coexist for a long time, but Powder dies in this scene, specifically when she is forced to. God, it's, you're not a fighter. Powder's not a fighter. Any, if the person who is Jinx and Powder chooses to be powder she can't fight she believes that about herself she needs vi to fight for her so vi prove you're that person still prove i'm that person still take this gun and kill her prove you're the person that will be violent because i can't be violent powder can't be violent silko eventually breaks out of his restraints fires the gun at vi jink powder pulls the trigger on Silco. I think it's Powder that's shooting Silco, but she has to die to Jinx to do it because Powder would never shoot Silco. Jinx would never shoot Silco. Powder wouldn't shoot him because she doesn't have the guts and Jinx wouldn't do it because she cares too much. But Powder cares so much for Violet that she is willing to metaphorically die because Jinx is so messed up mentally, she can't tell which one is which. So in the moment when she chooses the violent act, 
she convinces herself that Powder is truly dead. But she's doing it because Powder needs her to do it because Vi is going to die otherwise. It's just so beautifully layered. And the way she, the way that you see that she's got like the dolls of Milo and Clagger there, and the way that <sighs> like you, they, the, they they do the scratches all over the screen, and yeah, I mean the way they like convey her her fractured mind through the animation is just it's it's both beautiful and absolutely chilling, and. And yeah, just the way, you know, the. Mm -hmm. uh, that, this is the line yeah. that broke me when I was watching this the first time. <clears throat> that's the one that we're like, that's the line that I felt like I had, like I was a bell that had been run, you know? And it's, and uh, those lines are set over a black screen, mm -hmm. which just. <sighs> How scared were you when Jinx said, I made her a snack? <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. We, 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 we still have, a, you know, we still have a romance to play out. Right. Please don't do this. You know and then the thing, when she's like, I'm not that crazy. <laughs> but the thing is, everyone was convinced that she was. I was. I just, I was like, oh, my God, that's going to be Caitlin's head, isn't it? Um, if you play the game, you probably know it's not because Caitlyn has plot armor because she's a champion, you know, uh, and they didn't kill off any champions in the season. Uh, but I didn't know who was and wasn't when I watched it the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Me, me, me too, Matthew. It was, it was quite scary. Um, but, like, how great is the show that – that everybody was like, is it? Oh my God, is it? Because we believed that she might do it. Yeah. Jesus. It, it like, the fact that, like, I, I'm still wrapping my head around the fact that there was a scene like this at all. Just <laughs> because I, I know what you know, we've been discussing about you know, and we've all been having a larger conversation about like animation not being confined to you know what uh, you know a lot of people would like to refer to as you know for kids, and obviously the show you know right no. like not even remotely no. close to even pretending to be that. Um, TVMA, but. Um, and it's not it's tv 14 which okay like, which, that. That. but it's but not for kids personally i think it should have been tvm <laughs> just because if nothing else for the themes you know it's like this is adult stuff um but I mean, but then that could be ingrained from like yeah everybody does always underestimate what kids can handle as as well and and so uh, teenagers probably are fine with this as well but anyway the point of what i was saying was like this whole scene was so messed up and freaky and like it was just amazing <laughs> to, to see it you but, know on on the screen but, but we see <sighs> we see the true vi and the true caitlin and the true vander in this scene and unfortunately, I don't think we get to see the real Jinx or Powder because she she has... Oh, you meant Silco. Not yeah, I'm Vander. sorry. Did yeah. I say Vander? Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. I meant Silco. Um, I believe everything he said. I never would have given them to you. Yeah. I believe him. Uh, it sucks that the last thing he says to her is incredibly toxic, but at least it was genuine. Don't cry. You're perfect. What a horrible thing to say to somebody who is a vicious murderer. Because she's not, but perfect. it's but it's genuine, you know. As he's, well. he's, he's perfect in that she became exactly what he wanted her to be, which was a tool of, for violence. Yeah, yeah. So like, Again, like, were like Silco was a good dad. I'm like, no, he was he's not like, a good dad. <laughs> no, but it, he did. But care. that's that's the thing, though. Like, our emotions are still bound up in his love 
for for jinx even as we know that there's so much about it that's raw yeah well i believe him that he wouldn't have given her up but like it's a very toxic relationship yeah uh but you see like caitlin is willing to put herself on the line vi isn't there lines of vi is not willing to cross and it's great that we see all of that uh, in that moment unfortunately i think that powder slash jinx never figured out how to define herself outside of the context of a caregiver be that vander uh it could have like it was vander's and it was silco but it could have been by but she's so damaged she needs this like she needs this assurance that it's me and there's no way you're ever going to leave me Vi left her once behind, uh, even only for a few minutes intentionally. She was trying to come back, and she got grabbed up by Marcus, but she left her alone. Vander left her. Her parents died. Like that, the I that that, and she's a child. She needs that security, and that's the thing she's looking for throughout the entire series. She freaks out the most when she sees Vi, and then. Vi is taken away from her from the firelights, or it's just a goodbye hug, and Vi turns and leaves, and then she hears the shot from Marcus on the bridge, and she turns and goes back, and that's what sets Jinx off again, because she feels like Vi can be enticed away from her, and she's going to be alone again, which is so tragic, because let's face it, Jinx is a cute girl, and she's brilliant AF, smarter maybe than Jace and Victor, Cause she's doing all that stuff with scraps that she finds like in a cave with a box of scraps. You know what I mean? Yeah. Tony Stark level. But she's so damaged emotionally because of the loss she suffered that her brilliance only hurts people around her. Like, do you think the end of this show is a cliffhanger? I mean, in the sense that, you don't know exactly what happens next, but like, is it a cliffhanger? I think it is just because, is. just because, um, because now, if, like, the status quo that there was is completely upended, mm -hmm. and so I'm so now, like, it's going to be utter chaos, you know, uh. When season two starts, so yeah, I think that fits the definition of a cliffhanger. Okay, I, I kind of disagree because I I know what happens after that. A bomb went off in the council chambers. I don't think that's much of a cliffhanger, honestly. You know, like stuff got bad after that. I, I don't know. I'm kind of pulling your chain a little bit, trying to find a way to disagree with you about something. <laughs> Um, but that song that they're playing over the end of that too, uh, it's called What Could Have Been. Uh, it's sung by Sting, and it is a beautiful, haunting melody. Mm. No, I, I, I do. I, I, I think because there's a lot of threads that, you know, I, I actually went in kind of expecting this to be a more self-contained season uh but there's a lot of threads to that are left sort of uh unresolved um even though you know in a sense you could say that you know there is resolution to the fact that that james has solidified you know that that is who she is and and now there's you know they're kind of, if not going their separate ways, at least like now they have new, a new dynamic. And, but, uh, but I do think that, yeah, no, I, I'm sorry. I, I am going to call that a cliffhanger. Yeah. I think Mike has got it. Like he's torn on whether it's a cliffhanger. It is technically, but like if they never made another episode, it would, be a suitable end to what they gave us. I, I, I still, you could like at this point, 
Like, what's there's plenty left you could do, but like it does from the standpoint of the cycle of violence continues. You know? Yeah, but there's still I like there's a question in my mind as to where certain characters might okay. go. Everybody died. This and... Everybody in the council chamber died, and the cycle of violence continues. Like that would be a a suitable end. Not the best, obviously. Uh, but yeah. Matthew thinks it's not a cliffhanger because Powder died, Jinx was embraced, and she did what Jace feared and Soko wanted. Okay. Yeah, it's, I don't feel like there's big threads going forward um, that that have to be explored. I'm sure glad there is more threads ahead of us to explore season two and all that. Uh, by the way, I have a theory that okay, but you could say that. Like, I feel like you could say this about the end of Game of Thrones season one. It's like, you know, you, you, maybe you, not really, because yeah. the war is just kicking off at the end of. And you don't think this is a big kickoff? We don't point? see a shred of it. You know what I mean? Like, I can say it's the end. The next story is the war. But, like, if this was the end, it's still a self contained story. We're arguing about the wrong thing now. Let's, <laughs> let's get back to something completely different, shall we? Okay. Um, Savika, I was surprised to learn, is not a champion in the game. She's a character made for the show. But okay. she's got cyber arm laser blade punch you know powers and i thought she was an amazing character design for not coming from the fighting game you know the the heroes from the game as i understand it at least the main ones they focused on jinx and vi jace victor caitlin hammerdonger echo and i think there might be one more I can't remember. But yeah. So, uh, oh, you want to talk about how shimmer is a metaphor for crack? I mean, well, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it is because they, you know, crack was sort of circulated on the basis of, yeah, it's killing you, but it'll make you feel powerful for a while. And that was part of the draw of it. And that is definitely what Silco is selling to, you know, to control the underworld is the idea of like, you can be, you can be strong. So you can make somebody else scared of you for once. And uh, it's a pretty ugly thing to shine a light on uh, when, especially when you realize that, you know, it was done here purposely in the eighties to keep certain to keep certain uh, communities poor and disadvantaged, you know, let's take their money while poisoning them. But uh, Silco is is doing this ostensibly to gain freedom for Zon, though. But I don't but... Know, like the only time I ever actually see him move in that direction is when he meets with Jace. Because up to that point, it's about, it's not about freedom for Zahn. It's, that's his tagline, but I think it's about hurting the topsiders up to that point. Getting his and hurting the topsiders. Not not like yeah. helping the bottom siders. Yeah, it's, he talks a big game, but so much of it is... Uh... I thought I said it, Caitlin, but anyway, if I didn't, Caitlin. Yeah, but so much of it seems to be bound up in his self-interest, and and he's actually willing to hurt the people he claims he's, you know, fighting for. And real power comes to those who will do anything to achieve it. It's one of his early quotes, episode one. Yeah. Mm. Wait a minute. Um, Please talk about Mel and her storyline. Fair enough. Best character design in the show, by the way. Hottest character in the show, Mel Medarda. <laughs> no, not even, I mean, 
you could argue for this person or that person, but you really, they're fighting for second place. Mel Medardo. Um, I There's another character who... You think like, you know who she is, and then... Who, and then yeah, I, I think, like, it seems to set her up as, well, she's the political maneuverer who's going manipulate to manipulate. Her, her and, here and, like, don't trust her, don't trust her. Yeah, and... and then, tender moment with Jace and then stand up to mom and then you're like wait a minute yeah, yeah. I'm sorry go ahead John yeah and she and again it goes back to what I was saying about these characters are so so multi-layered and uh, and so often your first impression of them you know not you're not necessarily wrong about all of them but it's, but there's always something deeper going on and uh, and Mel was definitely one of those characters, and especially once her mom comes into the story and you're like, um, you know, gives you a better glimpse, you know, especially that flashback to, to when she was younger and, you know, and because... Yeah, what a th- chilling scene that is, too. Well, because also, and when she pushes Jace to, you know create weapons well you think well she's pushing for for war and actually no she's telling the truth about wanting to use that defensively but then her mom's gonna come in and push for the offense you know Mm -hmm. and so yeah it's just very interesting and and I, I want to pose this question because it's like, have we seen the last word? Do you think anybody survives that explosion? Yeah, I do. I think quite a few of them do, actually. Mel okay. among them. And uh, it, like right before the rocket hits, you see her neck piece or whatever lights up with a glow. Mm-hmm. That could be some sort of hex tech barrier thing. We've seen hex tech barriers a couple of times now, so we know they exist. It could be a defensive thing. She's a rich politician after okay. all. Her having some sort of like bulletproof necklace or whatever is not beyond the realm of possibility. One of the things I thought was great was her, in her introduction scene, she's like trying to choose a gift for another counselor and she grabs the child's toy for him and tells him only the sharpest minds can open it. You know, here's your happy birthday, idiot counselor uh, who's struggling with this child's toy. And anytime she votes, he votes the way she voted immediately after her. If you check every time she's in a vote, he's there. He waits to see what she does and then immediately follows her lead. Okay. And there is a time jump between episode three and four. Yes? Yes. Um, So Mel gives this guy this child's toy in episode two. And then we have this time jump of, I, I assume it's about seven years, right? Yeah. He's still messing with the same child's toy, trying to figure it out. So I didn't that, jump on that detail. Right. <laughs> yep. That's great. Okay, so Egg thinks Mel's going to make it, too. Yeah, there were enough red shirts. Like, there's the robot guy. And there's the clockwork necklace lady. And Sarah, here I was just jumping to the worst case scenario and thought like like everybody dies <laughs> in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but but yeah, it's I don't know. We'll we'll definitely see. It's going to be a long wait to see. Uh, Matthew, <laughs> is, uh, is, it, is it not said that it's five? It is not. There is no hard timeline given to anything except in episode two, Jace is 24 and Hammer Donger is. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to do that every time. Hammer Dinger <laughs> is 307. And, but we have no idea how far beforehand the bridge scene is or how far after episode uh, four is from three. So that is not established, but I I tend to be, think it's like seven years. I will and it's say because I look at Powder and I think ten year old, and I look at Jinx and I think seventeen year old. 
this is the way it looks, you know. I will say I'm very interested to see uh, ultimately what path uh, Heimerdinger ends up, you know, with in, Echo. on. Yeah, because it's, and that's another one of the reasons why I say, like, I, I feel like threads are unresolved because it feels like they're now setting up, you know, um, a, a storyline for him and how he's going to be involved now that he's off the council. And, um, which it, it's interesting because I feel like I didn't always know what to make of what they were like early on, what they were trying to say about, you know, who Heimer Dinner is because you're meant to sort of sympathize, I, I think, with, with Jason Victor and what they're trying to do. And, and Heimer Dinner is trying to like, you know, saying, you know, exercise caution and, and all that. And, and then ultimately, you know, you see that, you know, maybe he has the right of it. And, and so it's, yeah, I, I'm very interested to see what they do with him and, and what role he ultimately plays in, in the conflict that. Uh, yeah. Because that those is, two are the most, those two are very different top, bottom, young, old, but they they have the science connection. Mm-hmm. Which is fun. And because they have like we were talking about how when they when they have all these different labels, you'll get two people together that they're almost all the same, but then they they have one label that's different. But for me, it feels like Echo and Heimerdinger only have one label that's the same. And so they're bonding over that shared thing rather than discussing the difference in the one where they are different, they're discussing the one way in which they are the same. Yeah. Yeah, so it just, it's really clever the way they do that. The Caitlin By thing, they're both young. They're both uh, want to oppose Silco, but one's a topsider and one's a bottomsider. And and like that is what drives the relationship is them exploring the differences. And what makes that relationship so beautiful is that Vi comes to understand not everybody that lives up there is terrible some of them just don't have any idea what's really going on. How can you blame somebody who doesn't know? You know, uh, and Caitlin is genuinely trying to do right. And then Caitlin is is like, oh, I've heard it's bad down there. Then she goes down there and she sees it like, you know, by the time we get to the end of the season, she's ready to go to the council and be like, it's terrible. We have to do something. And and she was down there for one day. But I just I really felt for her in that scene because it's like, you know, you're talking to a room full of people who have just not given a shit for, you know, for a while now. Um, I, I I did want to say, like, another sidebar. I absolutely loved that moment at the, uh, I think it's at the end of episode four when Caitlin goes into the prison and, like, it's like that classic, like, you know, going to see the, the prisoner scene and, you know, and, you know, and Vi's throwing punches and, <laughs> and, you know, it's just like, you know, the, the badass who's been stuck in prison for too long. It's the Sarah Connor thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it just set, such great build up to that reveal. Um, but yeah, I like this. I also like this. This is me. All Caitlin's are they. <laughs> I so yeah. Uh, oh gosh, we got less than ten minutes left on this stream. I just took stock of the bladder. It's we've got less than ten minutes left on this stream. Um, <laughs> final thoughts? Anything like there, John? We could go on and on and on and on and on. Like if this had been structured, we wouldn't have gotten halfway through anything. Yeah, uh, yeah, we jumped around a lot for the reason that there was just like the the complexity of this show is insane. So like we couldn't have hoped to just go through this sequentially anyway. Um, I just had a couple of quick notes. You know, we we mentioned some of the voice actors. I want to 
shout out another voice I recognized. His name is Kevin Alejandro, uh, who voiced Jace, who actually was a cast member on uh, the show Lucifer that I was a fan of. Um, and um, there was, and also I wanted to. Oh God, what was the character's name? What's he do? What's he look? What he look like? Uh, is who was the the one who was the uh, the enforcer who was like Marcus the, Mar Marcus? Like terrible, but I appreciate the fact that we got to Even spend some time with him, and so he was. You know, he felt three dimensional even as he was, you know, an it, ass. It, and I, I also love that tell my daughter I and that's it. Yeah. And that's it. Because no, again, I I because again, I think in the those early not, episodes. Not Jenna Slint. Let's not go there. Jenna in those Slint. early episodes, yeah. he's like the the character like stakes his ground as like Oh, this is the unlikable jerk. Mm -hmm. um, and not that he's he a daughter who feels bad about Grayson and like he's definitely conflicted. He's a piece of shit. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. But he is but, not Geno Slint level, Micah. But like, that's the thing. We even like there's reason to, and your mileage may vary on this, but there's still reason to sympathize with even the person who is, you know, certifiably an asshole and you. you you know he's not just two dimensional, and and I, I think that's that shows the success of the show. Because um, they're wonderfully. like even okay, a name I didn't mention when I was just like I need to make sure everybody gets their name drop in. Singed is his character name. Is the scientist who makes the shimmer, who uh, is like a the first. Um... He freaked me out. Yeah, just want he's to a say. freaky character, but like he helped Victor early on, and and like he saved Jinx's life. Like he's not a throwaway character, even though like he is not driving any of the narrative. He's not a throwaway character, even to the oh, that's who I was forgetting. He's a champion too. Singed is a champion as well. Which and by the way, um, what was interesting is when you had. Sanry on the stream and you were talking about arcane and 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 she made a comment about how she she knew that uh jinx's a character had um had blue hair and pink eyes and for some reason that stuck in my head with this and i was watching uh this um like oh but the eyes aren't pink and then it got to that i'm like oh oh yeah <laughs> Yeah, once she shimmered up. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm like, well, that's a great way to build up to that. Like so. we, here's the thing. We did not deep dive Jinx at all. And there and we don't need to. There are channels like well, that have no, done I deep character analysis. I didn't say very much about Jinx. Fantastic character. Fan yeah, no. I mean, if we didn't, it's just by oversight. I, I thought we, we kind of talked about her. But... She, so when she was introduced into the video game, people thought she was a knockoff Harley Quinn. And oh. she kind of maybe was. I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know have the full context. But like, you know, as a video game character, she felt like a knockoff Harley Quinn. In this, like... I'm not disparaging Harley Quinn, but the 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 PTSD, the neurodivergence, the the uh, possibly psychosis that she's uh, she's experiencing is so much more visceral than anything they ever did with Harley Quinn in any medium. Well, I'll say it, that never. I mean, that parallel didn't occur to me. I right. can see where that would come from. Uh, yeah, especially but... in an early iteration of the character that's very stripped down. But, uh, but no, I, I think the character, you know, definitely like, you know, I mean, I just followed her. I was sort of glued to her journey through, you know, heartbreak and psychosis. And it, all that. it was just such a fascinating character that, uh, yeah, it's like you just when, when we see when, She's revealed in episode four. 
you know, grown up, I'm like, oh, like the show has been holding back on this. And like now we enter into, you know, her as Jinx and it's like a whole nother level. Indeed. Yeah. Um, the the voice actress for Jinx is called Ella Purnell. And she has like, would you be surprised to learn that she is not American? Um, I would have been, but I was searching for some interviews last night, mm. and and so I got to hear her accent. Like, stunning performance, but this show is just filled to the brim with yeah, you know, stunning performances. Watch the YouTube video get jinxed. Yeah, it was that was the music video they made to announce Jinx as a character for the video game back in like 2014. Okay, and it sort of kicked off Riot making music videos, and now they have whole like E bands, you know. Mm -hmm. um, <sighs> and yeah, anyway, fantastic show. Can't wait for season two. There's no way to touch everything that I. Yeah, it's. About. I just, I just thought I got to gush about the show that I absolutely love for two hours, and I only did this. In order to twist my your arm, John, you you right there <laughs> into doing this show, um, watching, you know, yeah, and no, uh, I don't even know what got into me because I, I remember we, you know, we were trying to think of an idea for something to do this week, and I was just randomly like, oh, you know what, what the hell, let me. I I know Stephen is you know, absolutely gaga over the show. Let me go ahead. If, if, if we do a stream, I know I'll get, to, I'll, I know for sure that I'll make the time to watch it. And, uh, and I am so beyond happy that I did because it's just, it blew me away. And yeah, <laughs> you know, there's just, I'm sure there would be a more subtle, way to gush about the show so that I don't seem so over the top but it is it, but when you when know you, but when you witness a masterpiece it's hard to say anything else yeah and it is that and um and this is going in, to in, be in her lady gaga you know reaction give here yeah this is going to be a standard bearer you know for you know, for a very long time, I think. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I just only hope that season two can, you know, <laughs> can measure Fingers up. Crossed. It's Fingers crossed. But it's even, crazy. you know, even if it fell short, we'd still have this amazing season of television that is, um, you know, so far beyond, you know, what I could have imagined it, it, oh. it was going to be. And, Fun fact, they're talking about the Get Jinxed music video. The Get Jinxed song is what Jinx is listening to when Silco walks in and he's like screaming her name. She's like <laughs> jamming to the song and she's got the goggles on, working on something. She's listening to Get Jinxed on the radio. <laughs> and she's like, that's my name. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, she's such a and, wonderfully and, and, chaotic and you'll you know, and John, you'll go back and watch this again later, and you'll be like, "Wait a minute, she's been working on the mechanical firelight since episode four, like the little flappy butterfly bombs that she uses at the end of episode seven. You, you see her working on that for several episodes, but it's just like it's just a thing that's kind of happening in the background because she's not talking about what she's doing. Yeah, you just see what she's doing while she's talking to Silco." Oh, I imagine there's going to be so many like layers of things that I catch uh, on a second viewing because it's almost impossible to like follow, you know, every intricacy of, of the story and the characters um, just because there's so much happening. So, yeah, I'm I, I'm very much looking forward to a repeat viewing. I only have one complaint about Arcane, literally one, and it's me being nitpicky. Okay, and it's that I did, and this is real. I did not particularly care for the fact that they had Imagine Dragons actually in the show, animated, making music, 
with the theme song in that one episode. I will give it that they cut away from that song by Vi kneeing, like throwing a flying knee to the side of Sabika's head, which is fantastic. But but yeah, like Egg, Egg agrees with me. That's the one. That's the one. Like, okay, you animated Here Be Dragons into an episode, and like, it's not enough that we got this. We have the song as like the title track, but now we get it in the middle of the episode too. But you know what? If that's what they're gonna do wrong, give me that all day. It's actually and like that's a personal taste thing, you know, I'm, and. That actually brought me more back to maybe it's because I'm not familiar with like the the group and you know and all, all all that stuff. It actually brought me back to Buffy the Vampire Slayer when they would have musicians playing at the Bronze. Okay, and I mean, different feeling show, but I got you. Yeah, like um, and that's the thing. Like I didn't hate it, but it did feel weird. It took me out of it. Yeah. I, I, it's a little like seeing Ed Sheeran in Game of Thrones. You're not wrong. Yeah. Did I and again, uh, and again dragons? because hold on, hold on. We have to acknowledge that I said here be dragons instead of imagine dragons. I was gonna let it go. No, <laughs> why? That's so good. <laughs> I'm glad that's on the internet forever. Thank you. Um I I think again a lot of this probably comes down to your familiarity with you know, uh, these groups like... Uh, I, I wouldn't have recognized them if they hadn't had them drumming and playing guitar and singing. Okay. Um, but, but it was a, sort of the same thing with like, you know, I know a lot of people had issues with the Ed Sheeran thing, but because I'm not familiar with him, you know, beyond the fact that his voice was on one of the songs from the Hobbit trilogy... Uh, like nothing about that looked out of place to me. Whereas for a lot of people, it completely pulled them mm -hmm. out of the episode. So, uh, so, so yeah, I, I think that plays into it, but I, I won't deprive you of that being a complaint. What felt weird, a little weird to me was just hearing the song in the middle of an episode. Uh, right. Just because it had been used for the main title okay, for so, every episode. So there, we we you, we did manage after two hours for me to say <laughs> one thing not glowing about our tank. I was shocked there was even one thing. It took me two hours to get there, but yes, we did find the one thing. Um, um but yeah, season two, yeah. get here quick, and it, I'm it's it's one of those like John. I know when season two starts coming or like they start advertising, it's coming around. It's going to be one of those you put on your calendar because you're hooked now. We got um, you. Yeah, no, I, I, it's so funny because, um, because mm. I, I was just thinking like that Micah had posted a comment about, you know, now waiting for season two. And I'm like, it, it, uh, I think he had posted that in the Slack. And I, I was like, yep, yeah, that's where I am. I'm, I'm officially a clown because I've gotten myself into another thing where, I'm just like <laughs> counting down the days until even a trailer for season right. two. <laughs> so, or like a teaser where it's just, you see like Vi looking over her shoulder or something. <laughs> I love that she's got the little six tattooed on her face too for Vi, yeah. you know, it's so good. Um, oh, and I, I, you know, we're out of time, but I, I, I do want to, cause I feel like we didn't talk about him very that much, but I, I just want to say like, uh, you know, pour out a glass for Vander mm -hmm. because he, he was a good one. You know, he's not, you know, not that he never did anything wrong, but you know, he he's, he, he, but he Vander, was, you yeah. He was our honorable man, you know, of this. To the real one, show. Vander. Yeah. Slancha. And with that, I think we're going to we're going to wrap up, all right? All right. I got to pee, y'all. So, <laughs> that's where the stream ends. Uh for everybody who was here to watch this live, thank you very much. If you're watching this afterwards, also thank you much, not not as much, but you know, much. We always appreciate those people that are here live. And so thank you. 
honestly, we we appreciate anybody that bothers to listen to the crap that comes out of our mouth. So let's and uh, yeah, and thank you for tuning into this one. Because I was really excited about this just because. Um, a, I knew Steven was going to be hyped up for, for this stream because you've been talking about this show for a while. And mm -hmm. I was excited about the fact that I was going to be able to share in that hype because mm -hmm. I just absolutely was blown away by this. And so thank you for, for you know, for those pushes that eventually got oh, here. Hey, man, you know me. Like, I'm never going to force anybody, but I'm not going to shut up about it either. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm really, I'm really, I'm just really glad you, and, you, you and, like it about as much as I do. Like it's, and, you know, and also I, I do want to say again, um, you know, it's been a tough couple of days for me. Uh, and you know, like I said before, this show really, you know, allowed me an escape and something somewhere to focus my emotions. And so just all the more appreciation, uh, you know, for that. Because sometimes, sometimes you, uh, you know, things, you know, come to you in the right moment. And I feel like this was the right Good. show for the right moment. Good. I'm glad. So, yeah, y'all come back next week. We're going to talk about Dune. Me, John, Nessie will be back for that one. Um, we've got other stuff coming up in the future. When Vox Machina is over, we'll be covering that one pretty quickly. I think we've got it on the schedule for the 19th of next month. So, Yeah that's that's not too far away uh it's been good season two's been good so far and i'm going to actually go ahead and catch up on season one of that show so that i can uh, uh okay get cool. involved with that as well right on you've got a you've got a few weeks and mm -hmm. they're short episodes fortunately you know like 22 minutes or something but cool. yeah so we'll see you next week for dune um if you want me to be your game master Message me. I got you. I'll do it. You, you pick. You tell me what you want. I'll deliver it for you. Uh, links come. Links forthcoming. But if you want me now, you guys know how to find me. Yeah. Okay. So until then, you know what it is. Peace and be excellent to each other. Bye, guys. Bye.